Hey everybody, it's Aaron Blaze here, and today I thought I'd show you some animating away from my desk. You know, I spent 20, 21 years with Walt Disney Feature Animation. I've been animating for over 27 years. And, uh, you know, a big part of that experience was animating on paper. I worked on The Lion King and Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin, Pocahontas, and Mulan. I directed a film called Brother Bear, but all those films, they were done old school. They were done on on paper. And so it's only been in the last couple of years that I've made the transition working what we call paperless animation, working uh, digitally. And, um, you know, I've got a couple of pieces of equipment, one being software, the other one being hardware that, you know, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. They're just perfect. You know, I use for my animation software, I use a program called TV Paint. It's fantastic. The drawing quality, everything, it feels like I'm drawing on paper. It's really, really great, and I'll take you through some of that. But also, the hardware. This is what I want to talk about today. The hardware I'm going to use today is I'm just going to use an Intuos Pro tablet. You know, a lot of people ask me what I use for equipment when I'm, when I'm animating. And most of the time, I use a Cintiq. I've got a Cintiq 24 HD. I like, you know, a nice big screen, and I like to animate really big. But... You know, there's times when I want to be downstairs with my family or if I want to be out and about. And um, my tablet is a really great substitute. I can be down here working on my computer here or I can be out uh, hooked up with my, my laptop and I can be sitting at the park. I can be sitting in a restaurant and I can be animating. And so, um, and it's also a much more economical way if, if your budget is tight and you can't swing getting a Cintiq, an Intuos... Pro, a tablet like this, is a great alternative, and I'm going to show you now. So why don't we just go ahead and get started. I'm just going to show you the interface here. First of all, this is TV Paint, and so I'm working on some animation of this ballerina, and she jumps up into the air. And I've got a fair number of the drawings in here, but there's still some gaps. And so what I thought I'd do is I'd take you guys through and do a couple of drawings and show you how easy it is to do this on our tablet. So you can see I'm sliding the slider up and down the timeline here. Uh, it, each one of these gaps you can see right here and right here, these are drawings. And there's little numbers on each drawing you can see, and that's the number of frames that each drawing is held for. Now usually I would like to have my drawings held for at least two frames, if not even more, you know, held for uh, one frame uh, to get really fast action. And so what I need to do is come in here and some of these drawings are only held for, they're held for four frames or eight frames. And so I want to break those down. I want to add more drawings and get the action nice and smooth. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a drawing right in this gap, right in here. And you can see I've got this held for four frames. Well, I want to add a drawing and hold it for two frames. So let's come up here and you can see I've got a skull and crossbones. I'm going to click on that. And what it's done, you can see it's added a drawing in between. So here's the drawing right here, the first drawing, held for two frames. And then I've got a blank. It's giving me a blank drawing and then the next drawing. So I've got to add a drawing in between these two. Well, one of the other cool things that TV Paint has, another function, is this right here. You can see the little light bulb. Well, when I turn that on, all of a sudden you can see my drawing before and after. It's my light table. So it gives me an indication of where to put my in-between drawing. And uh, it's sort of like, you know, when I'm working traditionally with paper, I'm flipping back and forth to see the action. Well, this enables me to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my slider right on that frame. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start drawing. Now, I usually like to start, you know, with the head and work my way down if I'm doing humans. And, and in this case, you can see I can stay fairly loose and I'm doing straight in-betweens. So I'm just kind of adding the torso, I usually get in the, you know, the torso next. So that's what I'm doing here. And you can see that the in-betweens that I'm adding are right in half, right in between. And that's why they're called in-betweens. So I want to get that leg coming in right there. Work that calf muscle right into the heel. And I can flip back and forth too using my arrow keys. You can see she's starting to, you know, the body's coming down and taking this weight. You know, when I'm doing this kind of stuff, when I'm working this loose, I'm really thinking about the physics. So I want to, you know, I'm thinking about exchange of weight. I'm thinking about momentum. 
thinking about a lot of different things. And, you know, one of the things I always talk about to young animators and people that really don't maybe quite understand animation is that animation, in my opinion, is one of the most left and right brain functions because obviously you're, you're using your right brain and being really creative and figuring out the acting and, and the emotion and all that kind of stuff. But animation, when you're thinking about the physics and the movement, is also a very analytical process and it requires a lot of kind of left brain thinking. So you can see very, very quickly, I've added a little drawing there. And if I scroll on the timeline, you can see we move through that, that action and it gets a little bit smoother. Let's do one more. So once again, I'm going to hit that skull and crossbones and I'm going to start drawing. I'm adding this, start with that head, indicate that neck coming down and the body. And here we go here, getting that torso, and I want that arm. See, the, her arm, if I click back and forth here, actually, I'm going to use a slider. You can see the arm is really starting to come forward very quickly. So that arm is going to be right about in here. And so here we go. Bring that arm in. And I'm also thinking about the arcs. You can see that the arm is going to arc this way. So I want to make sure that I get those arcs nice and clear. And all right, and I'm going to bring this leg. It's coming down forward here. That's that leg. And then this, this leg here, the one closest to us, is starting to come through. It's coming forward. There's that foot. There we go. This action that she's doing is basically an anticipation for a big leap. She's going to leap up into the air. And so what she's doing, she's, I'm thinking about, once again, the physics. She's gathering up that energy to make that leap up into the air. And so here you can see, again, a nice smooth action. Once again, I'm just using my, my tablet sitting in my living room, and it's nice. So why don't we just go ahead and play it and see what we've got. And there, look at that. So now you can see I've got some nice smooth movement as she leaps up into the air, this ballerina, this dancer. And um, so, I really highly recommend, if you want to get into animation and you are on a limited budget, you know, the tablet is a great option. Um, I use it all the time. I really like it. You, and the other great thing about it, once again, is its portability, hooking it up to your, your laptop and just being able to sit and animate anywhere. So anyway, um, get out there. Check in the TV paint, start working on your tablet, and go animate something. I'll talk to you next time.